fish or shark catch it, and they'll cause trauma to the animal that may cause it to relocate. And that's something that doesn't get talked about a lot. It may leave the wreck and go off to a reef because suddenly that wreck is a, is a bad place for the shark to be. We dropped down about 150 feet where we hit a thermocline. It went from a beautiful 85 degree water, dropped down to in the 60s, so quite cold. Under that thermocline at about 168 feet, we saw the sharks show up, some very large gray reef sharks. I got a tag on a fairly large female, and then I got to tag a large male, the largest male I've seen in this area yet, and it might explain why we're not seeing them here in the shallow part of the reef. They may be hanging down under the thermocline. She gets through the barrel. Steven up to his second spur now. All he has to do is put it on the boot, and he will win this duel of destiny. And Steven wins the duel of destiny. Danielle, I need you right here. Come here. I, I know it's a tough one. Good moment. job, Steve. Good job. Hey, no, I, I know this means a lot to you and your family. Tell me what's going through your mind right now. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. been a tough road and uh, all these competitors here are great, you guys. I just want to wish you the best of luck. All of you guys are awesome and I grew, so yeah. You should be proud of yourself. You toughed it out. You have been eliminated. Say goodbye to your team. Oh. Okay, Stephen. Victorious tonight. Congratulations, mate. Thank you. Come over here. Let's get your face on camera. Hey, how are you feeling? Feeling great. She's a great girl. It's awesome to take her out. At the same time, I really need this win. My confidence is down a little bit this week, but hopefully this brings it back up. Now, when you started off, you started pulling out the rope and you completely forgot the spur. Was that, that intentional? Was, that was a part of the strategy, yeah. Is that something I was you talked about? I up all the rope and then do the spur. <laughs> hopefully this can be the start of an awesome winning streak. Okay. Well, congratulations. You Thank stay you. in the game. Celebrate with your team. Bye. Okay, Danielle has been eliminated and Steven is still in the hunt for the $100,000 grand prize. But the night's not over yet. We'll announce who you chose as this week's most popular and least popular players when we return live. A nice day of sunshine and some warmth from this place is entirely different. We can see thousands of snakes covering the den floor here. And just look at this biomass. Thousands and thousands of snakes all the way up here. These guys are very warm, they're very active. There's lots and lots of females everywhere. This is exactly what we came to see. These are 2.5 milliwatt lasers. Underwater, what you'll see is two parallel laser beams. They'll be pointed out directly in front of me. This will enable me underwater to shine these laser beams onto an animal, and we'll be able to get an accurate assessment of exactly how long they are within maybe an inch or two. But luckily for me, Dozer is a very friendly giraffe. Check it out. Very smooth on the bottom, very rough on the top, made for ripping leaves from the trees of the acacia. What he does, he takes the food with his tongue and he chews it with molars right down the back of his jaw. And it takes him a little while to swallow it and get it down his neck before he can take another mouthful. They continue to struggle against heavy currents during decompression. That was an extremely challenging dive. That wreck wants blood. <laughs> oh, that was a heavy. Yeah, that was heavy. You know, it takes a special kind of idiot to chase down an extremely endangered animal on a wreck that's trying to kill us. Your objective is to knock your opponent off the platform. Each one of you will be armed with one of these. <laughs> is Luke kidding right now? My heart dropped immediately. We've got the gill net out here and we're walking the line looking for sawfish, but in walking the line, we came across this. This is the fin of a, probably a juvenile bull shark. It's been finned, probably caught by a local. It really impresses the need. Sawfish! Sawfish! We got a sawfish, let's go. And they're gonna be soaking wet all day. Yes. This is $250,000, guys. I don't care if you're wet, dripping, cold, hungry, starved, upset, mad at me, mad at the world, whatever. If you're here to win, you're gonna walk away with a lot of money. That's true. If you're not here to win, if you don't want the money, feel free to sit down, take a towel, and somebody will be happy to take you out, I'm sure. If you look at you know, the worldwide phenomenon of what sharks are, and, and you know, this is a business show, let's talk business, we're looking at a global industry of about $317 million annually just from shark tourism. So there's a huge industry of people 
wanting to make touch with sharks, both in the tourism industry, and then you look at Discovery Shark Week, which has unique views of you know over 21 million per released show. Mm -hmm. So you know the numbers are there to sustain a, a huge industry in sharks, and it's something that people are absolutely fascinated with. Do you think that the megalodon could still be in the depths of the ocean? And if so, do you think we will ever find it? You mean that extinct shark? <laughs> <laughs> so you say. <laughs> what are you, a shark expert? <laughs> Let's keep that to fictional movies. Though. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it's long gone. And we're not gonna find that thing. That thing is done. Why do you oh, man. Why do you say so? Why couldn't it be out there? I'd love to think that it could be, but yeah. it's been extinct for millions of years. It's unlikely that it's just gonna respawn. You know, it's not a video yeah. game. Okay. Okay. <laughs> for a mated female like this one, is a very dangerous place to be. There's crows all around. They're looking for an easy meal on a cold day like today. She's not moving too fast. It may seem harsh to leave her like this, but the reality is she's part of an ecosystem. The crows have to eat too. So the ones that don't make it become food for the crows fledglings and the cycle goes on. Thank you, sir. Good work. Oh, hard work, right? <laughs> Thank you. Well, jousting. It's exhilarating, it's adrenaline pumping, it's really hard, but it's so much fun. Really feel like a night of old. Let's go. This is a chum tube. It's filled with fish. You've seen it before. And uh, I need to take some more down for the sharks. To enable me to do this, I need some help. And for this, I'm going to use an underwater scooter. This is a pretty high-tech piece of equipment. Ah, it's also really heavy. This will allow me to do about three miles an hour underwater and uh, helps me deliver heavy payloads. The added bonus is that it casts off a really strong magnetic field which sharks are attracted to. So the great thing is, we're definitely gonna see some sharks. 